Hello, Hello sunshines. sunshines! I cannot believe I am sitting next to Shannon Lee, actress, producer, executive producer, mostly well known to be Bruce Lee's daughter, but so much more. Yes. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Oh, I'm fantastic. Thank you so much for inviting me into your home office. And yeah. I really am excited to go deep diving into the conversation of who Bruce Lee was to you and also who you are because you're a queen in your own right <laughs> who has her own identity. And I'm just very, very blessed to share this time and space with you. Oh, thank you so much. So we'll get the elephant <laughs> in the room out of the way. Okay. Your father, superhero to many people, martial yes. arts extraordinaire, and not only just in the martial arts world, but also to the Asian community for what he has done in bridging East and West and also really helping portray Asians in the American market in such a, a beautiful and wonderful way. But mm -hmm. that's who we know him as. Yep. And who was Bruce Lee to you? Well, certainly I know him that way as well. But, you know, he's my dad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although I will say um, I lost him at a very young age. Yeah. I was only four when he died. Yeah. So my memories of him are very brief, very uh, much like glimpses. Although... The thing I always say that I remember most about him is um, the feeling of him. Mm. Like, I, I had this, I, I've always had my whole life this uh, weird sense that I know him really, really well. And I think it's because, like, I know his energy. I know the feeling of him. I know what it was like to be around him to, mm -hmm. to, in that intimate way. And so, um, and so to me, he is sort of, He's many things. I mean, he's my dad. Mm -hmm. He's my, you know, um, my hero, my protector, my all those things. Um, but he's also my healer in a mm -hmm. big way um, because um, even though I lost him at such a young age, because he left behind such a big body of writings and thoughts of his on life and, of course, on martial arts as well, um, I feel like I've been nourished by him all these many years. And in fact, it's his words and writings and philosophies that um, have inspired me and made me want to step into the role of keeping his legacy alive. And I know you manage not only your father's account, but also your brother's account. Yes. And so you manage all these accounts to keep your family's memory and legacy alive. And what has that meant to you in order to do that? I mean, you know, it's always a, it's always a, interesting journey. <laughs> Let's start there. Um, on the one hand, I love it. It is an absolute honor and a privilege to be related to these two men. They were amazing men mm -hmm. and, um, and they brought so much light and love into my life. And so to be able to do that for them is, is really uh, my privilege. Um, and it's worthwhile because they were good, intelligent, wonderful people who lived, you know, really intentional lives. And so, um, so there's that aspect of it. Mm -hmm. Then there's the aspect of like, especially when I first started doing all of this, of like trying to separate in some ways, like the way people speak about my father or treat my father as a business mm. versus as a person. Now, me as a person, I don't really draw that separation. Like to me, it's all one thing. But in the beginning, I'd get really incensed, like if people were trying to like, I don't know, like negotiate in a certain way or whatever, I'd be like, this is my dad. Yeah. <laughs> you become the protector yeah. in that situation. Yeah. yeah so yeah. Ta almost like the tables have turned in a way yeah. in terms of obtaining licensing, make sure everything is portrayed yeah. in the right way. Yeah. Um, so has there been a pressure to maintain all that? For sure, and and um, and I take uh, sometimes a lot of heat for it because people think that because I'm so stringent about how my father's legacy is reflected out in the world mm -hmm. that I'm um, just in it for the money or I'm just in it for this or that. And, and all I can say is his legacy is so meaningful to me that I would rather not take money for it if it meant protecting it. And, and you know, people whatever we, we all approach the world however we approach the world um and so sometimes there's some misunderstanding about all of that but the truth of the matter is like my father's legacy is one of love really yes. and and i 
and I try to operate under the sort of guidelines of love and what I really think that means when I, when I try to put it out there in the world. Now, you're also the president of the Bruce Lee Foundation. Yes. Could you describe <laughs> and tell the viewers what your foundation aims to do and kind of all the initiatives that have come out this year? Yeah, so the Bruce Lee Foundation is um, uh, our 501c3 charity, and it um, has done many things. Um, right now, we have a new program that we just launched last year that we're continuing growing this year called Camp Bruce Lee. Oh, exciting. <laughs> so you so have exciting. people coming in to learn Bruce yeah. Lee's way? It's for kids. It's mm -hmm. like uh, kindergarten through fifth grade age kids uh, right now. And Darn, I did not um, make the cut. Yeah. <laughs> Although we're working on <laughs> stuff for adults too, um, um, to sort of teach them the mind, body, spirit approach to life, mm. like introduce martial arts yes. as you know, uh, as as a way of movement of the body and 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 creating some confidence and all of that uh, physically, but then also his philosophies and also the spirit of harmony and togetherness and how to work together and, and all of that sort of thing. I mean, we know a couple of the philosophies, like just like one of them, like be water, my friend, is what I'm really yeah. doing for this interview because I have so many questions to ask, <laughs> but depending on the flow, I'm just going to yeah, be just like gonna, water. We're just going to go we're like this. Like <laughs> but has there been a philosophy or a saying that maybe is not as popular or one that resonates with you mostly that you'd like to share? For sure. Um, so I've, I've, I've said this, but um, my, app, my favorite quote of my father's, I mean, there are so many. At this point, it's hard to even continue to say this is my favorite <laughs> because as I yeah. like dive in more and more with his philosophies, there are different ones that resonate with me at different mm -hmm. points in my life. But this one will always be near and dear to my heart because it's really the one that popped out at me mm -hmm. um, in, a, in a really like direct way at a time in my life when I was really needing some guidance, mm -hmm. which was after the death of my brother. Yeah. And so I came across this quote that I had never heard before, and I'll try not to butcher it, um, <laughs> it's a little bit long, but the, the most important part of it is the first part of the quote, which is, the medicine for my suffering I had within me from the very beginning, mm. but I didn't take it. I observe, I, oh, I recognized my ailment, but I did not observe it mm. until this moment. Now I see that, oh, see how I'm butchering it. It's sort of like the last part is like, now I see that I will never find the light unless, like the candle, I am my own fuel. Woo! <laughs> Your father is very poetic. Very poetic. Very, very poetic. Yeah. And I know you were talking about releasing a book um, yes. upcoming with your father's philosophies in there as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I've, I've written a book, um, and we're in the editing process right now. But it's called Be Water, My Friend. Oh, ah, uh, yes. yes. <laughs> um, because that is sort of the most popular yeah. um, philosophy of his out in the world. And um, it really focuses on how to use his philosophies in your daily life. And I tell stories about him and his mm -hmm. life and me and my life and, and all of that. But um, it's really centered on like introducing the world to him as a philosopher and a teacher in this way. And then also uh, letting people know like wh what that inspiration is and what that relevance is in their lives. Because, I mean... A lot of people think, oh, well, I'm not a martial artist, so that's not going to apply to me. But yeah. it, it's really, these are human philosophies. Oh, yeah. You can, anybody yeah. can apply it in their everyday life. Anyone can. And many people have from all walks of life. Now, I like to deep dive into identity. I yes. think we have a very uh, <laughs> si unique situation in that being mm. Asian, uh, we could talk about this. And mm. maybe it's not brought up in most interviews. But, you know, when Bruce was uh, training Wing, in Wing Chun with Ip Man, you mm -hmm. know, finding out that he wasn't 100% Chinese. Mm. I mean, his colleagues didn't want to train with him. And mm -hmm. how has identity affected your father's life in navigating this industry? Well, I think the way that um, the many different experiences of prejudice that he had in his life, which went on throughout his whole life it mm -hmm. never was it wasn't just like oh it happened you know at that one time yeah <laughs> <laughs> it 
<laughs> that was the one mostly recorded. That was, that was the one. <laughs> um, but I think that that what that helped him to do is to really focus on his humanity. Mm. And, and he really worked on cultivating himself. And he had a very strong identity as a Chinese man. So I'm not saying like he set aside the fact that he was Chinese. In fact, um, he embraced the fact that he was yeah. Chinese as one of the special ingredients of his humanity, one unique to him and, of mm. course, many other people on the planet. Yeah. But, but that was something that made him who he was. And at the same time, you know, throughout his whole life, he held this belief of just like um, human first, right? Yes. Like you're a human, you're a human, you're a human, no matter what gender you are, no matter what background, what ethnicity, whatever, right? And so he had a tendency to deal with people based on just who they were in, in their communication and relationship with him as opposed to what they look like, which is, you know, in, you know an interesting part of their makeup, but not you know, uh, the humanity being the core central part of it. Now, Bruce Lee was born in San Francisco, just like me. Oh, nice. <laughs> and I know he was born in the year, the hour and the year of the dragon, which yes. in Chinese astrology is like, you're already destined for greatness. <laughs> <laughs> but can we talk a little bit about Warrior? Did the writings of Bruce Lee stem from being born in San Francisco and taking it back to the 19th century? Mm. I'm so excited for Warrior to hit the uh, yeah. Cinemax yeah. on April 5th. So yeah, yeah. please explain this process because it didn't happen over Overnight, right? No. <laughs> if you consider overnight to be 50 years, yes. then yes. <laughs> so my father created this idea for a TV show, like I said, 50 years ago, yeah. uh, pretty much. And um, for himself to star in as a starring vehicle, he pitched it to Warner Brothers. And then he was told um, that a Chinese man could not uh, be the lead in mm -hmm. an American TV show, that American audiences would not accept that. And, you know, which of course... <sighs> He was like, okay, if you say so, but I know that that's not true. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, he was struggling at that time to sort of make some headway in Hollywood. He had set as this goal for himself to be able to create in the West um, an authentic portrayal of a Chinese man mm -hmm. and authentic to his culture, his love of martial art and all of that, right? And um, because that's who he was and he wanted he wasn't seeing that reflected anywhere. And so he was not just auditioning for roles in Hollywood because those were pretty slim pickings. Sure. He was trying to create his own. And so he had this TV project. Um, it didn't go anywhere, as we know. Um, and so uh, uh, shortly um, around that time, he left to go to Hong Kong to do the first two movies to try to make some noise over in Hong Kong so that then Hollywood would potentially um, see his value, yeah. which, you know, um, <laughs> it's like <laughs> such, a, such a thing for everybody to just like, no, I'm valuable, you know? Yeah, like, <laughs> especially here, you're like too Chinese to be ho in Hollywood, and then when you go over to Hong Kong, you're too, too Caucasian or too, too American. So yeah. it's like we always constantly struggle with the identity crisis yeah. who we are but I just always love the fact that your dad was always like human first yeah human first yeah yeah and so anyway you know as we know my father passed away um, he did get that Hollywood break and enter the dragon but yeah. um, he he passed away before that was released and then all of his writings and all that sort of sat in boxes with mm -hmm. our family for all these many years mm -hmm. and then um, I started looking after my father's legacy and and I'd always heard the story of his treatment um, I came across it, and Can I was like... Can you describe like, what that feeling was like? I mean... Where you're like, one day I'm just going to go into the house and shuffle through these papers, <laughs> and this is it, this is the next movie idea. Like, what, what mind space were you in? Well, it wasn't really that. I mean, first of all, when I say boxes, I mean it's boxes and boxes and boxes, not just like two boxes. Mm -hmm. So um, I was coming across all sorts of things, his yeah. philosophical writings, his mm -hmm. drawings, his poetry, his... Um, his martial arts stuff, his uh, day timers with all of his appointments in it, and then not just this one treatment, but multiple treatments that he had written in his time. So, but when I came across it, I thought, oh, here's this thing I'd heard about my whole life. Yeah. 
And at the time though, it was like late 2000, I was just starting to sort of like familiarize myself with everything and not just the materials, but also like what contracts we were entered into and what business was happening and like how to get my arms and all that. So really I just sort of like cataloged it in my brain and thought, okay, at some point I'll get back to this. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then I kind of never did. <laughs> <laughs> Because you have your own life, too. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, and I got a phone call out of the blue from Justin Lin, who, wow. yeah, which, by the way, is pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> I had met Justin, but just sort of briefly here and there. Yeah. Um, we, didn't, we weren't, like, friends or anything. And he called me up and said, you know, I've always heard this story that your father created this show is that true? And I said, yeah, it, it is true. And in fact, I have the treatment. And wow. yeah, and he was like, wow, do you think I could see it? And so we got together and I brought the treatment along and he read through it and he was like, this is really something. Like, this is really good, first of all. Yeah. And we should um, make this, but not we should just make this. We should make this the way your father intended to be made. And if we can't do this right, if we can't do this justice, then we shouldn't make this. Sure. Which were music to my ears, right? Because like, in part, it's taken me so long to get so many things going because I want to do them with the right integrity and the right intention. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times it's really hard to get that done, in particular in Hollywood and in particular... You know, I'm sort of seen as an obstacle to a lot of people as opposed to... Oh, like, will she approve? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. As opposed to a collaborator, yeah, right? Like, they, yeah. they don't want me... They want me off the team. They don't want me on the team, mm, you know? And yeah. so my experience up to that point had been a lot of... A lot of people coming to me and saying, oh, we want to do Bruce Lee Project. We want to do Bruce Lee Project. We want to do this, do this. We want your blessing, but we don't want your involvement. Hmm. And I was like, mm, yeah, it doesn't really work that way. Yeah, yeah. no, it doesn't. <laughs> I mean, it can, I suppose, but that's not what I was going to do. So, yeah. yeah. Well, dare we talk about the trailer that just dropped for Quentin Tarantino? Sure. Yeah. I mean, in Preserving Legacy, I'm sure that was a huge, like, ooh, uh, like, ooh, something, just swords drawn, you know? <laughs> because yeah. were you approached by, by him to put your father's likeness in a movie? No. Yeah. No, and even though, you know, he's within his rights creatively to do that, um, there was a little, first of all, there was a lot of concern on my part sure. because um, I don't really know how my father's going to be portrayed. Yeah. And um, I had also heard stories about because that film deals with the Manson murders, that uh, Quentin Tarantino had taken a lot of care to talk to some of the other families that would be portrayed in the film, Mm -hmm. um, in particular of the people who were killed, which I appreciate, but never once thought to reach out to me. I I think because people think Bruce Lee is a celebrity and an icon, and therefore his family isn't really like his family or some I don't know. Like yeah. I don't really know how to say it. Like he's a prop he's property. He's yeah. not um uh, someone's father. So yeah. um so there was no which whatever, you know, like uh, I go through my life my own way, so I don't mm-hmm. worry too much about other people, but um but there was nothing like that um offered. There was no like anything and I know again it's one of those things where it's like well we don't want your input we Mm -hmm. don't want you to um, even know about it so then that way we don't have to worry about like what you think essentially Mm -hmm. Um, and so I just hope that it's done well I really I have no idea the trailer that came out not great yeah but um, also like super just a few seconds so yeah, can't really tell exactly how <laughs> yeah. your father's going to be portrayed in, yeah. in that movie and then that way. But And by the way, Mike Moe, who I have met and mm-hmm. who is an actor portraying my father, is a lovely guy, yeah. a huge Bruce Lee fan, and I know he wants to, to do right by it. So, um, you know, I, ha- I have nothing against Mike. He's, he's lovely. I have nothing against Quentin Tarantino either, really. Yeah. Um, I just have no idea how this is going to be handled. Yeah. 
Ooh. And the trailer didn't give me a whole lot of solace. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess we'll see. So yeah, it's definitely anxiety-driven <laughs> right there. But yeah, yeah we'll, we'll have to see. But, um, you know, we talk about your dad, your brother, your family a lot, but I want to know you. So who is Shannon Lee? <laughs> who is she? Um, you know, we, we, we talked earlier a little bit about, you know, some of the struggles. And I, and I would say definitely, by the way, no different than anyone else. You know, the struggle of identity is one that we all go through, sure. whether your father's Bruce Lee or not, right? Yeah. Um, and certainly for me, um, that has been the case. I have struggled um, and been in relationship throughout my whole life off and on with like, what does that mean? Does it mean nothing? Does it mean something? Is it... Is it, it, I mean, it's inextricably a part of who I am and yet has kind of nothing to do with who I am, yeah. and yet it does. <laughs> I totally got what you were saying, though, by the way. <laughs> you're, like, searching for it, but like, I totally I mean, like, get what you're saying. It does that. because his influence on my mm -hmm. life, I mean, and particularly his philosophies and his energy and all of that, have helped to create who I am as a human being. Mm -hmm. And who I am as a human being is created every day by me. Yes. And so at the same time, it has, so in the, on the, in the one instance, it has nothing to do with me and, and everything to do with me. Mm -hmm. And there have been times when I've gone through my life saying like, telling nobody that I'm Bruce Lee's daughter. Yeah. And because I don't want any of that, like any assumptions or any influence on who that might make me to that person. Yes. Um, and then I've been like, oh, this is crazy. Like, I feel like I'm hiding a secret that I'm ashamed of, and I am in no way ashamed Absolutely. of this. Yeah. <laughs> <Absolutely>. <laughs> and so then you experiment with, like, just kind of not, like, throwing it casually into conversation unbidden, but, like, yeah. if, you know, people ask you, especially, this is what I do for a living. So mm -hmm. people, oh, what do you do for a living? Oh, I, you know, I have a production company and a licensing company. Oh, really? Like, what kind of productions and licensing <laughs> do you do? You know, and it's like, eventually, the conversation just unwinds to that place. Yeah. And the more evasive that you're being, like, the harder it is to also just be yourself. Mm -hmm. So I've experimented with all sorts of things, and and... There's no right answer, you know. It's all it's all just like, what is the situation? What's the energy of the situation? Who are you talking to? Does it, whatever? And then sometimes you, you drop the Bruce Lee bomb, and it's no big deal. And sometimes, like the other person, never recovers. <laughs> <laughs> that is the best way to put it. You have a really amazing sense of humor. Like, can we just be real about this? <laughs> you have an amazing laugh, and oh, I can just tell you. so much joy exudes from you. But mm. you have a family of your own. I do. Yeah, and can you just describe what, what is a day in the life of Shannon Lee when you're not doing things that are so, like, Bruce Lee-centric? Yeah, you know, first of all, my family comes first. Mm -hmm. And so I have a daughter who is 16 and wonderful and amazing. Sweet 16. Yes. <laughs> and... Um, and it was really interesting when I became a mom. I just have one child. When I became a mom, um, I remember before I became a mom, I was so worried about how was I going to be a mom mm. and act and run a business and do all of these things. I just, in my mind, and I think it's something a lot of women struggle with. Mm. And then I became a mom and I just realized like, oh, you just figure it out. Yeah. And it works and it works out. You know, like, yes, there are things you have to shift around and your life isn't the same shape that it was before. But, you know, my daughter um, is a priority for me and as is the rest of my family, my father, my brother, my mother, um, and then the family of my business and the people who work here. Like, we are a family. In fact, like, literally, my cousin works here, so... <laughs> <laughs> But, um, uh, you know, th the priorities are, my father held this belief at, uh, about the individual over the organization or the institution. Mm -hmm. And I uh, operate the same way. Like, the people in my life that I come into contact with, they're, you know, I, I want to be there for them. I want to connect with them. And I want to um, lift people up. And, of course, that extends out into the world as I 
become sort of the funnel for things Bruce Lee out in the world. But um, it starts with like you and me sitting sitting yeah. here, you know. Yeah, definitely the conversations that lead to bigger ideas. And yeah, what is your um, ideal situation with the legacy and with you? Are you going to stick on as executive producer, president? Like, what what do you have in mind um, for your family? Yeah. You know, it's a work in progress, but here's what I'll say. Like, I, I, um, so you asked me who Shannon Lee was, and I didn't totally answer that question. Yeah, you still kept talking I about know. your dad. I so. talked about my dad. So, <laughs> so I'll go back to that for a yeah. minute because it helps answer this question too, which is uh, what I've come to know about myself is that um, uh, the idea of creating positive energy and love out in the world is very important to me. Mm-hmm. I, f- I view what I do as an act of service. I also like to have fun, as we've noted. <laughs> um, so like this TV show, Warrior, it's a lot of fun. It also has some nice things to say which um, a- and to show out in the world. But it's also fun. And I, and I think that um, that was one of the lessons <clears throat> that I really learned from my father, which is um, e- there's a time and a place for teaching for sure, Mm -hmm. Um, but people are, uh, when they're entertained and engaged in like an enthusiastic way, they're more open. And so when he did his films, his first and foremost, he was like, I am going to do the most exciting martial arts action movies ever. And then I'm gonna sprinkle in all of this stuff. And so I kind of follow along in that way, like, um, I know that I love to share um, anything that I think can be helpful. Mm-hmm. I also like to have fun and entertain, and I like to uh, have care for the people around me. And so I will continue to executive produce. I'll continue to try to grow the programs of the foundation. I'll continue to keep my eye on the legacy and make sure it's going in the right direction and all of that. But I'm not too overly precious about all of it. I think that a lot can get lost when we get a little too precious about Mm -hmm. things. Um, Our impact gets a little limited in that way. And so, um, you know, I, I, I like to make sure that the big, the big, you know, like uh, set pieces are are being seen, yeah. if that makes sense. And I always ask this in my interviews. This is why it's called Now You Know. Okay. But has there been, in every single press junket you've been to or every interview about your dad, a question that you wish was asked? And mm. what would that question be? And what would you be willing to share with the viewers? Um, something about you and your dad that we may not know about. Whew. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I guess as I get older, which is happening, um, I do become more and more rooted in my own identity. Um, for many years, I floundered about trying to figure out what that is, and, and it's not some locked in stone thing. But um, I, I am feeling more and more comfortable in my own skin and able to step into myself a little bit more um uh, and you know which is why i've written this book and i'm starting to you know talk more out in the world and all that kind of stuff um so i i guess i do appreciate when somebody asks a question about me who wants you know like not like oh look can we talk about me but just like that they understand that i'm not just a vehicle for bruce lee yeah (laughs) even though I am also that. Um, (laughs) um, And so um, I also have a very, I I guess what I would say about my father, although I don't know that my father would have characterized it this way, is that my father had a very deep spiritual side, and so do I. And I have a pretty committed spiritual practice. And by spiritual practice, I don't mean religious practice. I just mean things that I practice to expand uh, my connection to the universe, to one another as reflections of that, Mm -hmm. to 
grow and expand who I am as a human being and my potential um, to cultivate my own energy. Because yeah. one of the things I see ab about my father is that, and that I c felt about my father palpably and has carried with me throughout my whole life is that he was so he had so developed and cultivated himself and his energy that you could feel it. Like he walked in a room and you'd be like, who's that guy? You know, yeah. like you see him on screen and he just like, you're just like mesmerized by yeah. him. And it's because he did so much deep personal work and, um, and he, toward the end of his life, coined the phrase, um, being an artist of life. And um, I, I would say maybe something people don't know is just the depth of that practice for myself and also for him. Absolutely. Yeah. You can still feel them. Right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, oh definitely. Gosh. <laughs> definitely. I just have to share. Um, I know I shared with you at the Empower Conference, but this interview has been so cathartic for me. My father grew up following everything that Bruce Lee did, literally studied in Wing Chun, like <laughs> did Jeet Kune Do, went over to Hong Kong and tried to train with Ifan. Wow. And, I, you know, visited a site like we went to the Giants game just to get that Bruce Lee bobblehead <laughs> now you can just call me yeah, I know <laughs> well thank you and you know it's in his columbarium my father mm. passed away three years ago from cancer and I will always remember that the most thing that he was excited about because we were never like religious religious but spiritual as well yeah it's like, I can't wait to meet Bruce Lee in heaven. <laughs> and I thought awesome. that was just the craziest thing. Like, that's how much your father impacted my father. So having mm. this conversation now, people are saying, you know what? Our dads probably met, talked, and through some magical universe, <laughs> made this connection happen. Yeah. And so it's been very, very, it's been a privilege and cathartic to oh. just share stories about our dads and just... Yeah you know, just us as, you know, daughters with our dads, you yeah, know, yeah, and just yeah. continuing that legacy. So I just yeah. want to thank you. Oh my gosh, it's been my pleasure. What did yeah. your father do in life? Well, after martial arts, he was supposed to go to Hong Kong to do like movies, just like Bruce Lee, but then he dislocated his shoulder. Uh, uh, and I was like, oh, but then we all did martial arts as well. But yeah. he was just, you know, grew up Born in Washington, D.C., moved to San Francisco, met my mom, you know, <laughs> and uh, just try to continue the way of the philosophy of Bruce Lee, really, like yeah. throughout his whole life, even though he knew he was suffering from cancer, like he always had such a positive energy and outlook on life, and he instilled that in us, and I just feel like the energy, like now knowing Bruce, I feel like I know my dad even more, Yeah, you know, it's like that weird feeling of that you know it was meant to be on this path yeah, kind of thing yeah so. well what a gift first of all that um your father maintained that energy and that uh, in the face of whatever was going on in his life and and pass that on to you um because it's so easy to get bogged down by things in life right totally. and so that's a beautiful and wonderful thing um and um, i really honor him for that and it is very much the Bruce Lee way. <laughs> <laughs> so good job. <laughs> and, Thanks, guys. <laughs> and I also do believe that um, the universe is conspiring in our favor yeah, all the time. Yeah. And, um, and so whenever anything in life or in work is not working out, more and more I'm just able to say like, okay, I see, I get, okay, that's not meant to be. It's time to adjust and, and go over here now. Yeah. yeah. On that note, is there anything you'd like to say to just anybody out there in regards to what you're doing, what you'd like people to support, and how people can support and continue the legacy with you? Oh my gosh. I mean, I guess any, if you, if people from all walks of life, like, I really encourage them to get to know my father, his legacy, and his philosophies and see how they can transform your life. I mean, Yes, you can follow us on our social media, um, our website. You can support the foundation, which would be lovely. And, and you can watch Warrior and you can do all those things. Um, but most importantly, um, anything, at, I really think that Bruce Lee and his philosophies can, can lift people up and not just lift you up, but also help create more unity in the world. And so, um, I don't know, I think just by like 
reaching out and familiarizing yourself in whatever way you choose with his philosophies. That's what I would encourage. Well, thank you so much, Shannon. Yeah. I really appreciate your time today. Oh, it's my pleasure. And I really liked getting to know more about you and your infectious laugh. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> it's followed me around my whole life. <laughs> Love it. Thank you. Hi, I'm Shannon Lee, and I'm the CEO of the Bruce Lee Family Companies, the president of the Bruce Lee Foundation. I'm a soon-to-be-published author, an executive producer, a singer, or an actress, and a mother. <laughs> and you've been watching Nikki Sun. And if you didn't know, now you know. Hello and welcome to my brand new tech channel, Tech Nikki Speaking. My name is Nikki Sun, and if you got the play on my name, then we're gonna be great friends.